G'day, welcome to another episode of Country Life on the Coast. My name is Sean, and on today's episode, we're gonna build a cheap timber pool pump cover. So we have an above ground swimming pool with obviously a pool pump, and the pool pump, it does say that it can be outside, but to help it last longer, I'm gonna build a cover, an enclosure for it basically, just to keep all the rain and the weather off it. So this is our pool pump that we've got to build a bit of an enclosure for. Basically, uh, all we need to do is a nice box and then just have a couple of holes on the other side for the two pipes to come out of. I have some timber here. There is some old fencing timber. It's all hardwood. It was heading for the dump uh, that I picked up a while ago now. And so what I'm gonna do is use all these bits of offcuts or old fence palings and that to build this enclosure. So my design is as follows. As you can see, 450 long, uh, 350 deep, and between 350 and 400 high, that we're just gonna angle back just to help the water run off it. We have most of our timber now cut size and what I'm going to do is this is going to be the front frame and I'm looking at trying to make this panel removable but basically what we're going to do is if that's the bottom piece we'll just overlap them a little bit and we'll screw these all together and that way the rain will run off it so that'll become the front panel and these I'll use to join, so the back panel will go on here, just make a bit of space, and then we'll just join the sides from this to this side. So I'm gonna build this one first, and then we'll do the two sides, and I'll work out how we're attaching the front to it all. Uh, but yeah, really simple, nice basic construction. I'm just gonna screw all these down. So the bottom one will be, just go flat, but then everything else will be sort of raised a little bit. And again, that just helps for the water to run off. I'll overlap these about 20 mil. So I might just put a bit of a mark on it so I know where they've got to overlap. And that will be it. Well, there's our sort of box together. So what I've got is this front piece is just removable. Just sort of sits in there. The rest is all just screwed together. And I still need to do a couple of cutouts here for the hoses, the pipes to come in. I also need to put a roof on it, which I think I said before, I'm gonna hinge it. And just sort of trying to work out what's the best way to go because I'm considering, basically thinking I'll build it the same way I've done everything else with this and just slope it down uh, and probably just do the timbers like this. Well, I've got all my timbers cut together. I haven't attached this roof part yet or anything. I've just sat it up here. I've got two pieces of timber running across and then yeah, all these sitting on here. You can probably see my issue is that this is very flat and I'm concerned that the water is not gonna run off it. So I'm just considering options at the moment before I proceed and do anything else. And well, it's getting late in the day so I might actually put all this away for this afternoon, sort of think about it overnight and come up with a solution to which way to go because I don't like this at the moment. Um, I don't like that water will not really run off it and then it's just gonna soak through the timber, which is not ideal. So I'll um, have a bit more of a think about what we can do. We'll catch you later. Well, it's a couple of days later now, and I've had to think about what I can use, and I've actually had a look around here as well. And what I'm going to do is actually make a frame like this, and then use a bit of old metal that I've got here. This was from when we built our carport just recently. 
just a piece of off cut that we had. So I'll cut a piece off, sit that on. And that'll actually then work as our, our roof. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just cut this down to size because I just need to trim a, a couple of the pieces. And I think what I'll do, uh, and I'm gonna try doing a half lap joint and that way we can glue and screw it together, I think. That way it'll be a nice and strong frame and then the metal on top will then help sort of all lock it together as well. So we'll do the timber work first and then we'll cut the metal out to the right size. So we've cleaned up these, come up pretty nice. Quite happy with the way it's turning out. So as you saw, just use the compound miter saw just to cut all this off and then just use the chisel just to clean the last of it off. So now I've just got it sitting up on blocks. I'm gonna glue it and I'd like to screw it, but I don't have any screws that are sort of, needs to be about 12 to 15 mil. What I'm going to do is just glue it and clamp it down uh, and then leave that overnight and I mean glue holds really well and then when we put the metal on as well we'll screw the metal down that will help certainly hold it but the glue is really what will support it. So I think we'll glue this up. just wipe up the excess a bit and then we'll put that inside and leave that overnight. Actually, before we do anything else, just measure up. So we're just gonna come in uh, probably 10, 20 mil. So we'll measure up our actual size of this uh, and then we can cut out the metal so that's ready to go as well. So it's about 500 by 450. So I'll go and put this inside. Okay, so we can confirm that the 450 edge is the bit that's gonna run down that way. So because of the way the metal is, we just need to make sure we cut it out in the facing the right way. So when we cut this out, we need to make sure that the 450 is this way and the 500 is across. And if we take off, say 20 mil off each side, just so that we've basically don't have sharp metal bits right on the edge is what I'm thinking. Well, our frame should be dry now. So we'll remove the clamps and then we'll screw on the color bond sheeting on top. So that's all we need. So now we'll find our hinges to mount those on uh, the box itself. So now I'm going to install the hinges and the easiest way for me to install these at the moment uh, is actually on the outside here and this way at least it's going to tilt right uh, it won't get caught on anything as well so if I install these on the inside it's going to catch up and won't open as far 
So this is just going to be the easiest way for me to do it. So we'll screw these on and a little bit on. So there we have it. So we've attached the roof. I've put this side piece on. You saw me cut that and attach it. I've also done a cutout on the back here for the hoses, the pot, uh, or the water pipes to go in to the pump. So the lid lifts up to give us good access. The front has this panel that's just removable. So I can get access to the front as well. So there we have it. That is my pool cover. So I'll go and install it and show you how it looks. So there we have it. It fits. The pump fits in there nicely. The pipes run nicely at the back. And the lid, we have good access to the top of the filter. So our filter sits inside there. So we need to undo that, pull that filter out occasionally and clean it. The front pulls off, so if I ever need to access the switch or anything, because there's a switch down here, I can just pull the front cover off, or put my hand in from the top if need be. So overall, really happy with it, considering it's leftover pieces of uh, fencing material and a little small piece of uh, colourbund sheeting. But that will definitely keep all the water, keep the rain off the pump, just keep it out of the weather. Help it last a lot longer. So I hope you've enjoyed it. That's all we have for this episode. So thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. That would be fantastic. And we'll catch you next time. God bless.